Aboriginal Australian instrument. But what's the physics behind it? How does it work? So, let's draw a didgeridoo. It's closed at one end, where your mouth is, and open at the other end. Here, it will have the maximum air pressure, and here, it will have the minimum air pressure. If we were to graph this with a scale of minimum down here and maximum up here, what we would get is a minimum down here where your mouth is and a maximum at the end where the air is moving up and down the most. And we know that the wavelength of sound it looks like a sine curve, so it would look something like this. From this, we can see that the length of a didgeridoo is equal to one quarter of the wavelength. We also know that the speed of sound, we'll call it the letter V, is equal to the wavelength, represented by the Greek letter lambda, times by the frequency, represented by F. And so, if you have a longer didgeridoo, you are going to have a longer wavelength. And if the speed of sound is to remain constant, a longer wavelength will mean you have a shorter frequency. And a shorter frequency will mean that you have a lower pitch. What if you could dynamically change the length of your didgeridoo? My hypothesis is that if you make the didgeridoo longer, you will get a lower pitch. But will it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have made a didgeridoo that can be dynamically adjusted up to two PVC pipes. Now, watch what happens when the pipes are long. Listen to the pitch. And when the didgeridoo is short. This shows that by dynamically adjusting the length of the didgeridoo, I can dynamically adjust the frequency and also dynamically adjust the pitch. This shows that our Australian Aboriginal ancestors were masters of the art of physics.